There we go, all set. Okay, welcome again. Uh, thanks everybody for showing up. A lot of people was, uh, was not expecting uh, so many people. Uh, great, uh, you're all here. Oh, uh, the food was nice. All right. So, a uh, quick uh, introduction about myself. My name is Renzo Toma. I work at uh, Bolland Toma quite a few uh, years within the IT operations uh, department. Uh, I'm a Linux engineer and a Python developer. Uh, I like huge streams of data and make sense of it in uh, real time. So that's why uh, one of the reasons why I like Elasticsearch and the app stack. Um, at Bold.com I designed uh, the Metrics and the Wolf Search platform. Uh, the Metrics uh, platform uh, I will not uh, discuss uh, this evening, but it's uh, also very cool and uh, lots to tell, talk about. Well, married man to a proud uh, father of two people. And I'm kind of wondering uh, who I am uh, looking at. Uh, please raise your hand if you are a software developer. All right. <laughs> Um, who is system engineer? All right, an IT, IT architect. <laughs> okay. Um, manager. Okay. Uh, anything else? Mobile developer. That's a developer, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, excellent. Okay. So uh, 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 the majority of you is uh, software developer, and uh, second uh, comes system engineering. Um, okay, oh, cool. Let me start uh, the talk. Uh, it's about Elk, and uh, I'm not going to say much about uh, uh, these uh, two systems from a functional point of view. There's a lot to talk about, but uh, do start the uh, uh, browser and uh, Google on them. I'm not going to talk about the functionality of these systems. I'm going to talk about the, 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 the technical bits uh, when concerned uh, scaling. Um, so, a quick Quick, quick, very quick introduction. Workstage is for uh, processing the data. Elasticsearch is a distributed search and uh, elastic, uh, um, analytic search system, a very cool piece of software. And of course, there's Kibana, the, the interface for all the end users for searching and uh, visualizing the search results. Okay, now uh, let's talk about Elk at Bolton. We use it as a Wolf search platform, as Arjen uh, mentioned. Um, it's for the, our uh, developers and operation people to search and analyze uh, through uh, uh, lots and lots of uh, log events using Kibana. And uh, events are coming from many sources. Um, uh, it's uh, the native syslog. Uh, currently, uh, we're up uh, around a thousand unique uh, sources. So that's servers, uh, uh, network appliances, uh, uh, storage appli appliances, things like that. Also, uh, access logging. So it's Apache Vhost access logging. And uh, the log 4 j logging, uh, we run all our applications on uh, JVMs, the yeah, virtual machines, and, and uh, uh, every JVM has a log 4 j and a logging component. Uh, many other sources, I will uh, mention them uh, briefly during this presentation. Um, one of the great things about uh, our platform, yeah, sorry, is that when, uh, uh, beginning this year, uh, we, we launched our uh, entire inter, uh, infrastructure in two new data centers that have, have been built from scratch. When you start something from scratch, you get a lot of freedom to do everything right, at least uh, as far as you're concerned uh, for the previous years. Um, so what's the great thing is that um, we were able to put the log search platform uh, in the core of our infrastructure. So it currently means that if you start a new virtual machine, this logging will automatically go to the log search platform. When you start a new application, uh, uh, the same. Uh, everything is now so automated uh, using Puppet uh, that uh, when you add something, uh, logging is not something you need to do anything about. You get it immediately. The fun part is that uh, when you start up a virtual machine and you look at, uh, at logging, you will actually see the first uh, moment that it's, it's kicked up from uh, an image, it starts to uh, feed uh, the log search platform with logging. So it's not just logging from when everything is okay, but it, it starts, well, at the moment the virtual machines kicked off. Well, why uh, did we uh, invest uh, money and time uh, for in building a log search platform? Well, um, in a previous data center, we had access to logging, but uh, uh, all on a uh, centralized address share, and, uh, well, searching was done with uh, crap. Yeah. Uh, so, a lot of uh, room to improve uh, from there. Uh, 
why we wanted a long search platform is because uh, we know from experience that when there's, there's a problem, an incident, a, a bug, uh, uh, whatever, uh, logging is very uh, interesting for your root cause analysis. So that means that if you can uh, make access for searching and analysis uh, much easier, it will also improve your time to repair. And uh, in a commercial environment like ours, it means uh, uh, less uh, revenue lost. Okay, so I'm, uh, I tell you uh, the log search platform is great and uh, we do it uh, because we think it's good. Well, I'll give you two examples why we think it's, it's good. Two real life uh, examples from the last uh, few months. The first one is uh, uh, we, re we released uh, a new webshop version and um, we got an Agios alert, a monitoring system, uh, saying uh, that processing time uh, went up. Processing time is uh, a JMOS metric that tells you how many milliseconds it has been processing requests for the last well, X minutes. Uh, so something was wrong, something was slow, slower than, than before. We also have a header metric uh, telling us that the, the amount of ad active threads in JBoss also went up. Well, that's never a good sign uh, unless you have uh, lots of more uh, requests coming in, but that wasn't the case. So every request took more time to process, meaning your current concurrent amount of threats was rising. But still didn't know why and, and where uh, we had to fix it. So we uh, opened Kibana and started uh, a search. Uh, I've added the, 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 the Kibana, the machine query uh, here in this slide, uh, to check for all uh, requests on, the, on, the, uh, on our vhost with a response time of five seconds uh, or, or higher, meaning or slower. So this query then gave us all requests within the selected time frame for, uh, well, uh, two slow requests. And what we got was a list of requests uh, uh, um, from the access logging, all about the same URL. Uh, it was some, some internal uh, Ajax thing, I'm not sure what it was anymore, but what it uh, meant was uh, we now had a clue. Uh, so development got uh, involved and uh, they fixed it. And the second uh, real world uh, example is uh, uh, a more recent one. Um, again, about performance in the web shop. Uh, uh, we had uh, a strange performance spikes. I believe uh, every every day around well, four o'clock, uh, around four o'clock, uh, all of a sudden performance went up and stayed there uh, a few minutes and uh, oh, restored again. We didn't have a clue why. We only know, knew that uh, well, it was uh, very unwanted and we wanted to fix it. Again, Kibana uh, and uh, search query for uh, all log uh, 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 for j uh, logging, all the errors uh, for the, the, the web shop, WSP application, and it called us all the, the errors uh, uh, we wanted. We then uh, zoomed, uh, zoomed in uh, for the time frame uh, before, after, and during that spike. And we then started to analyze uh, what was the difference, what time uh, of, of j uh, Java classes uh, were during the spike and which were not uh, before and after. So we got a lot of errors uh, uh, saying uh, uh, the connection from, uh, from the, the web shop to uh, a back-end service uh, had timeouts. Well, okay, uh, timeouts, great. So the next thing uh, you do is look at the performance uh, uh, of, the, of the service and uh, see if there are, were any, any errors. And uh, there, there weren't, actually. The service was fine. No alerts, nothing wrong. Um, so the next step was to correlate with metrics. Um, uh, we, we use Graphite, with, uh, uh, and we follow the, the measure everything uh, uh, quote from, uh, from Etsy. Uh, so uh, almost everything is in Graphite. Uh, even the things that, uh, that don't move, uh, we put them in Graphite to, for the time that it does move and is wrong. Um, so we opened uh, the Graphite uh, and, and checked uh, what happened uh, during uh, yeah, such a spike. And uh, we saw we, we were able to correlate uh, those timeouts uh, with a full garbage collection. And uh, you, a lot of the software developers here, maybe also a, a few uh, Java developers, you probably know that uh, well, Java is, is good or bad, but one of the um, possibly bad things is uh, you really need to manage your memory. Uh, it can bite you, uh, meaning uh, if you have good, full PC, the GCs, uh, it's like uh, the, the world stops. The JVM is busy with the full GC, do nothing else. Well, imagine you're on the web shop and you're uh, all out of order, your new uh, plasma television, 
and uh, well, uh, things break down in a time. It's not uh, not cool. So we were able, uh, uh, starting from uh, uh, performance spikes uh, to uh, uh, errors in uh, in, uh, in in the of J logging, to eventually uh, uh, a matrix uh, that says, well, uh, you're currently full GC. So what happened was uh, we uh, we uh, we enabled profiling on production environment for the the, the web shop, and uh, we saw. Uh, um, uh, yeah, we, we uh, investigated uh, the issues and uh, eventually we found out that um, the, the, the backend service was not a problem, but the, the client uh, had a problem. It was very memory intensive, and during that period uh, there, there was some kind of uh, extra traffic which caused uh, the, the memory to, uh, to become full and garbage collection to, to kick in. So two examples why uh, why we use uh, and how we use uh, the log search system at uh, both home. Okay, um, quick step uh, back in history. What you're looking at right now is the, the initial is design of the, the elk stack that we uh, started with uh, somewhere somewhere uh, last year. Um, it's totally well. It's it's um, uh, very different from what we're currently using, and that's uh, the topic of this part of the presentation. Um, we started with this design. Uh, it failed on, on uh, quite a few uh, 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 positions, uh, uh, places, and uh, so we had to redesign it and uh, it's uh, into <coughs> the design we're currently using, which is uh, much better. But to understand why it's much better, uh, yeah, we have to do a, a quick uh, history lesson. So this is the, the, the old design. Um, you see a log station in the middle. Uh, Logstash uh, uh, acts as a syslog server. Uh, it, uh, it receives uh, syslog messages in the syslog pro message protocol, uh, uh, converts the, 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 the lines into uh, a key value uh, uh, a dictionary, uh, a JSON document, and the JSON document is then uh, forwarded to uh, an asset search for storage, and Kibana is your interface uh, searching through all those JSON documents. Then we have uh, a few sources uh, on the top. I think I have a laser pointer here. Yeah, you yeah. have. Okay, you have the, the syslog. Uh, so that's the syslog coming in from all the servers, routers, appliances, or whatnot. Uh, it's all sent to a centralized uh, syslog server uh, for local storage on disk, but it's also forwarded to uh, a little session instance uh, using UDP. That's uh, uh, quite standard for a syslog. And uh, the, the reason why we like uh, UDP is that it's uh, fire and forget. The sender sends it doesn't have to wait for an acknowledgement uh, like uh, happens with uh, TCP. So if there's uh, an issue on the receiving part, on the log session part, there's no chance of blowback to the to the, uh, to the sender. It, uh, it, it does not impact, uh, for instance, the webshop. Uh, talking about uh, the, the webshop, uh, we also have a lot of uh, Apache web servers that uh, create access logging for all requests. And uh, uh, we used here we used uh, a package uh, a remote syslog. That package is from uh, a, a paper trail. It's not the, the R syslog, it's a, it's a, a different uh, package. It's a, a log file tailor, like the, the, the tail command on the, on the Linux uh, front, but this one entails a uh, file, and if it sees a new, uh, new line, it will uh, send it uh, using the syslog protocol to, in our case, uh, log station. And uh, the, the last source uh, is uh, the Java applications I uh, already mentioned. So the, uh, uh, the a lot of uh, log events uh, uh, are created there uh, by uh, our application, but also by, by our middleware layer. Um, and we, uh, we've configured uh, our log4j uh, uh, component to use uh, the syslog appender. Uh, by default, you use uh, the file appender to write uh, the log4j events to your local disk. But in this case, uh, uh, we send it to, uh, to the syslog appender. That, yeah, again, sends us to the log session instance. Let's see if I missed anything. No, that's okay. Okay, so this, this was our initial uh, design, and it, uh, well, it, uh, it failed us. It uh, didn't work. So let's, uh, let's see what, uh, what happened. Okay, our first uh, issue was that we are running with a single log session instance. Well, uh, that's not really scaling. It's hoping for the best. So it, uh, it broke down, uh, uh, very high uh, CPU load, uh, was to be expected, I mean uh, a log stash, uh, one of the core elements of log stash is, uh, is the grog filter, 
the, the fog filter, uh, you, you put it with, uh, with, a, with a text string, uh, it does a lot of uh, uh, CPU expensive uh, regular expressions, and then it comes out the key values for uh, key value dictionary, as I mentioned before. So high CPU load, okay, mm, bad. And then um, we also had uh, a lot of data drop. Um, after some investigation, we found out that it's the cause, uh, uh, the, the cause by uh, yeah, in terms of uh, UDP. Again, UDP is fire and forget. Uh, no acknowledgement on the server side. Um, when you send a lot of UDP to a server and the server is not able to read it fast enough, uh, the, the, the input uh, buffer in, uh, in the Linux uh, uh, network stack fills up. And when it's full, uh, well, it starts to drop packets. So everything new, uh, uh, if the buffer is full, uh, got dropped. Uh, you see a graph of uh, a graphite uh, uh, metric about uh, UDP and errors. This is the one that we saw. So normally it's a flat line on zero. Well, it's not. Uh, if it's not, you have an issue. So what this uh, resulted in was submission events. So events got created and dropped somewhere along the line, and uh, nobody could find them in uh, Kibana. Uh, one re unreliable system. Not good. Well, this was uh, uh, field number one, and this is field number two. Our log for j events uh, uh, are usually multi-line, uh, meaning uh, well, they have a stack trace. Uh, example I've shown uh, here on the right. It starts with uh, a line uh, uh, mentioning a timestamp and uh, uh, another uh, lot of things. And then, if you're unlucky, it starts with a whole stack trace where the, the issue came from. Um, we used uh, the sysvol compiler in, in, uh, in, in log session. And the sysvol, uh, sorry, in, in log4j, in the Java application. And one of the issues about uh, the, the sysvol compiler is that if you send a stack trace, every line in a stack trace is sent as a separate sysvol message. So one stack trace may equal uh, 100 uh, messages in log session. Okay. Um, and log session is then responsible for merging all those separate lines into the original. Well, remember the previous slide, we had a lot of UDP drops, so uh, imagine uh, your stack trace being turned into Swiss cheese. A lot of uh, lines missing, uh, sometimes even the first one, so the whole event yeah, was corrupted, uh, unrecognizable un uh, by Morsef. Again, uh, a data loss. And the third uh, uh, failure of the design was that uh, when selecting Syslog as, uh, as a uh, communication protocol, we did not really uh, know about this uh, bullet in Syslog RFC. Yeah. And uh, for a native Syslog, it's okay, because clients know about this limitation and uh, well, uh, prevents you to send more than one kilobyte. But uh, when you use Syslog as a protocol for Apache log formatting, and uh, you use a very rich format, and you run it on a web shop with a lot of cookies, um, yeah, it's easy to, to get a, a line uh, 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 4K. I've seen lines of 8K, a lot of cookies. So it means that uh, anything after the 1K will trend. And uh, after it will trend, it got sent to Logstash. And on Logstash, uh, yeah, it had an incomplete line. It, it, it missed uh, quite a few elements that it was expecting. So these uh, the log events, and there were a lot of them, uh, also unrecognizable, uh, unable to parse them, and uh, you could not find them in Kibana. So three uh, situations where our setup was uh, yeah, uh, uh, creating a very unreliable system. But things got better. Well, essentially, the only way is up. So uh, uh, we thought about uh, uh, improving it and uh, well, came up with these, uh, these three things. Um, first, we, uh, uh, we hate the fact that we were using just one Logstash instance. I mean, uh, we're uh, building everything n plus one in our data center, meaning one instance uh, is simply spare. Uh, for uh, for the case that one fails, and we're running with just one. So if one log stage failed, um, yeah, we had issues. Um, it also meant that when we wanted to uh, activate new confirmation, we had to restart the log stage, and it was the only log stage. So during the restart, all data got lost because yeah, we were using UDP. Well, syslog, and I've said about syslog, uh, we wanted to drop it as transport. Um, and, um, uh, what we also wanted to do was uh, reduce the amount of uh, groping done in, uh, in Logstash. As mentioned, very uh, CPU intensive, very powerful, don't get me wrong, but very CPU intensive. And 
We were also wondering, wouldn't it be great to simply um, feed Logstash with a format that, that it yeah, natively understands? So no need to do regular expressions. Simply feed it with a JSON document that it does understand and yeah, uh, uh, be done with it. So we wanted to decentralize a lot of uh, 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 processing, simply uh, uh, do processing or even formatting. It's not even processing anymore. You're simply formatting the string uh, to, the, uh, to the, the sources as much as possible. Uh, another great thing uh, about uh, this idea was that um, um, as I mentioned, Grok is very powerful, but uh, uh, make very complex Grok statements. Um, um, don't look at it for a month. Come back and try to explain why it works. And um, then uh, uh, try to add some configuration uh, without any regression. It's, uh, it's very hard. So we want to, uh, to have uh, uh, less complexity and again a reason why we want to use Grok. Okay, this is the latest uh, design. Uh, things have changed for the best. Um, we still have uh, uh, um, the log session instance, but uh, uh, very central in this design is uh, the, the, the Redis queue. We've uh, added uh, two Redis instances um, for, for anybody that doesn't know about Redis. Uh, Redis is uh, a very fast uh, single thread uh, data structure server. It can be used for a lot of different data types. Uh, we just use it for the list type. And the great thing about the list type is that you can use it as a queue. You uh, pop uh, of your you push uh, on the right, and you pop from the left. And well, uh, um, if your uh, uh, the, the, the popping side is, uh, is faster than the pushing side, you have essentially a, 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 an empty queue. So that uh, that was our uh, solution to uh, trying to scale a log stage by adding a messaging and queuing mechanism. Um, I'll talk about it more in a, a, a few slides uh, um, later. Um, okay, so we still have the, 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 the syslog uh, um, source. Still all those uh, servers are sending it to the centralized uh, log, uh, syslog server. But instead of uh, syslog server forwarding it to, uh, to uh, log sash on UDP, we're using now uh, a custom uh, tool we've created. It's called Logsheep. Um, yeah, uh, the sheep part I will explain uh, uh, during years. Uh, where I know about it, we have a few people who are, yeah, it's uh, wrong. Okay, uh, so there's a daemon running on the systems, and uh, uh, Logsheep uh, receives it from the system server and, and um, sends it to uh, Redis. Essentially, Logsheep is a Redis client. Oh, we still have, of course, the Apache web servers, uh, and we're still using the, the access uh, logging. But here's an example of the pre-formatting. Instead of uh, using uh, um, the, yeah, the, the default way of uh, uh, writing access logging, um, which is to, to, to format it with a kind of default pattern and then save it uh, right into a local disk or to disk, uh, we've pre-formatted it as, uh, as JSON. Uh, that's not so difficult, of course. I mean, JSON is just a string. So uh, if you can, uh, can create a string, then you can create a JSON document. Uh, so all our, uh, all our Apache web servers are now creating uh, uh, single line uh, uh, JSON documents. Um, uh, then it sends to, uh, to, uh, to Logsheet. And uh, Logsheet uh, Redis is a uh, Redis client, so it will send to Redis. And uh, bit similar we use on our uh, Java applications. We're still using the, the Log4j. Um, we're still using a pattern, uh, but uh, uh, before we used the syslog pattern, and currently we're using the, the Redis uh, pattern. Um, it's, uh, it's a fork from a, a well-known GitHub project, but we tweaked it a little bit. Um, uh, it now also has fail over and a bit of batching, so it's, uh, it's more and more efficient. Uh, but one of the new things is uh, that we have uh, added uh, a layout. And the layout is uh, a, a plugin within Log4j. Um, yeah, it's, it does a formatting. So, um, as uh, with the Apache web servers uh, that we did, uh, uh, we're now creating a single line uh, uh, JSON documents. Uh, the, the same is actually happening in, uh, within uh, log So, imagine uh, uh, something goes wrong in the Java application, an error uh, 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 event is created. It's now sent to the, to the layout, so the event is, is converted into a single line JSON document. 
uh, including the shack trace, if there is any, um, including uh, all of a sudden the, the line number and the class in which the error occurred. So we, we get uh, a lot of uh, bonus uh, uh, properties all of a sudden. And well, the JSON document is in the uh, so sent to the appender for there to run. So that's the whole. Oh yeah, we, we still have. Uh, of, we also have added a lot of other sources because you know, we're scalable and you want to do something with it. Uh, yeah, really. So a lot of uh, new uh, new sources. Um, yeah. So with Redis, we were able to uh, to scale Edge. Meaning, uh, uh, yeah, and as many Lostage instances as you need to, uh, to, uh, to keep this whole system real time. And the Lostage instances uh, still sending to Elasticsearch. And um, uh, last year uh, we only used Kibana 2, that was uh, the, the most recent version. For now, also using uh, free uh, impeller. And so uh, a lot of people are uh, used to Kibana 2, so yeah, they use 2. And a lot of, um, a lot of people know uh, about the, the cool uh, features of Kibana 3. So they're, they're using three. I'm pretty sure that uh, by the end of this year, we'll, uh, we, we will kill, uh, keep on to. OK, current status. Um, just a little facts. Most of the facts I will uh, uh, talk about a bit later in the uh, next slides. Uh, we use a, a lot of uh, Lostash instances per, per environment, simply because we're still using a very old Lostash version uh, where we quite happy with this one uh, because we, uh, we keep, try to keep our uh, log size pipelines as, uh, as simple as possible so uh, no need for extensions although sometimes we, we would like to have them but, uh, well, it's on the backlog you know how that works um, yeah, the reason why we use so many log size instances because, is because uh, uh, we, uh, we're using an old version and the old version uh, uh, does uh, it misses a feature to, to increase the number of output workers, meaning threads that are responsible for sending events to Elasticsearch. Uh, so every Lossex instance has a, a single threaded process to, to, uh, to put it uh, put it blunt that's responsible for sending uh, uh, events to Elasticsearch. So we, we try it with, uh, with five and then up it until ten. Uh, yeah, uh, so we now have a real time system. Our Elasticsearch cluster, uh, six data nodes uh, with uh, two client nodes. Uh, the data nodes are responsible for, for hosting the shards, and uh, the client nodes uh, uh, are in use, uh, uh, yeah, keep on calls the client nodes. The client nodes are Elasticsearch processors, but don't hold any data, but they do know where the data lives. So they're doing the load balance. Yeah, every data node, uh, every physical machine uh, has uh, seven uh, data disks. Uh, and one of the cool features about Elasticsearch, and I believe that's one of the very old features in Elasticsearch, that you can give uh, uh, it multiple data path. So give it a seven data path, and it, it will start striking. So your data is not, uh, when you uh, uh, imagine uh, a lot of a big stream of, of uh, new events, it's not all put on that just one disk. It will uh, uh, spread it over all the disks. Um, we're not running with, uh, uh, with uh, solid state or flash uh, disks. We're still uh, running a soft state, so probably a SATA uh, disk. Um, so uh, by striping, we uh, get a lot uh, higher uh, uh, IO for the uh, 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 IO write operations for second. Uh, current, uh, uh, currently indexing uh, between two and 4,000 uh, documents at, uh, per second. Um, yeah, the, the, the number uh, varies per, per, per day, per, per hour, essentially. The first graph on the right uh, shows you the, the indexing rate, and you see there there's a bottom line uh, uh, yeah, around, uh, around 2K. And, uh, well, if things go up, it's yeah, uh, because uh, there's traffic on the website, of course, uh, during uh, uh, day hours and uh, the evening hours, there's more traffic than uh, during the night. During the night, uh, we only get uh, traffic by uh, well, Australian people and uh, Googlebot. So there's a, there's a lower limit. And of course, uh, our syslog uh, goes, uh, goes on 24 7. So that's why uh, there's, a, there's a bottom. Uh, one of the, the key metrics to keep, uh, keep track of uh, when, you, uh, when you're running a system like ours is the average indexing time. Uh, we love to uh, keep it below one millisecond. Uh, any higher, 
how we had it, and, uh, we had issues. Uh, you know, we, we really need to uh, invest uh, some time to, to fix it. Our current uh, record is uh, at uh, 300 million documents added per day. Uh, that equals 185 gigabytes. Um, I believe a normal day is, is, is uh, somewhere around uh, 200, uh, 200 million, 250 million documents added per day. Yeah, the number of searches, yeah, a bit of a bit of a disappointment. So uh, you uh, you're very busy with uh, the scaling platform to, to make in that, that uh, the indexing uh, real time very fast. And then uh, you look at the number of searches, the number of times uh, the end users uh, use your system. And uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not really uh, what I'm hoping for. But again, it's a log search system. So uh, uh, people are not uh, browsing through uh, logging 24 7. They only start, uh, uh, they, they open Kibana if there's a problem. And uh, uh, if there's no problem, then uh, the logging is uh, just uh, waiting for a time that uh, yeah, somebody's interested. Uh, yeah, the short count. Uh, one of those uh, million dollar questions uh, regarding Elasticsearch how many shards should I use? So I don't have the answer, sorry. But we are using uh, three shards per index. And, and with a, a replica count of one. So it means that every primary shard has one replica shard. Uh, we're running with a total of 3,000 shards. As you can see in the, the, the lower graph, uh, you see, uh, it's, uh, I believe this is a week, you see uh, <coughs> bumps every every day. Uh, the bump is when uh, a Wasash creates new indexes. And when the bump lowers again, that's when Curator uh, closes uh, the oldest uh, indexes. So we're currently, uh, currently running at uh, 60 days of retention. It, it depends on, on sources. Some sources uh, we, uh, we kill uh, quite, uh, quite early because it uh, doesn't really uh, have, a, have a point of keeping it for 60 days. And some sources even uh, stay at least 90 days. Again, it also depends on how many disk spaces we have. Okay, um, lessons learned. Well, um, do have uh, metrics if you start tuning uh, a complex system, uh, a multi multi server system like Elasticsearch. I mean, you could of course uh, change settings and hope for the best, but uh, well, that's not how we do things here at all. So we, we have a lot of uh, metrics in Graphite, and using those metrics, we can uh, really validate every change that we uh, execute. So please do start with uh, collecting the metrics uh, so you get a baseline and see if your change is good or bad. Uh, our weapons of choice of graphite, I've mentioned before, Diamond. Uh, Diamond is a daemon running on every uh, server, Linux server. Uh, it has a lot of uh, collectors. The, the default collectors use expect, so CPU loads, uh, network usage, disk usage, things like that. Uh, also, uh, a very, well, uh, disclaimer here, unbiased, a very great uh, search collector. And uh, it also has uh, uh, or one of the, the third uh, uh, weapon in our uh, uh, list is uh, JCollectD. You've probably uh, heard about CollectD. It's an alternative to, uh, to Diamond, uh, which we're not using, but we are using uh, JCollectD. And it's a bit of um, yeah, a forgotten bit of, uh, of, of, uh, uh, of tooling. Um, uh, we, were, we hear a lot about CollectD, uh, but JCollectD, uh, really not. Okay, CollectD, it's a, a Java agent. So you start your JVM with, uh, with, uh, with an agent uh, uh, parameter, and it starts uh, uh, the JCollectD plugin. And JCollectD plugin uh, is configured with a list of uh, MBs, and uh, every 15 seconds, I believe, in uh, our setup, it will uh, uh, iterate over those MBs, get the values and send them via diamonds to Graphite. So we have a lot of metrics coming from the JVM itself. Um, yeah. An alternative, of course, is, uh, is Marvel. Uh, uh, very nice looking tool uh, uh, for the classic search. We're not using it because um, yeah, Marvel is, is very uh, elastic search uh, uh, oriented. Actually, it is elastic search oriented. It also uh, shows you some uh, uh, JVM and, uh, and OS uh, metrics, but that's it. And, uh, we're really looking for a very complete view of, of, of metrics, a holistic view, and uh, that's why we're not using uh, uh, Marvel. 
And of course, to, to almost we started with graphite before Marvel was there. So that also takes uh, the same amount of time. Okay, um, I have uh, two sets of, uh, of uh, Elastic Learn tips uh, from you. A few for uh, a lost station and a few for uh, Elastic Search. And then we're all done. Let's start with uh, the first one. Uh, yeah, I've already mentioned uh, Redis. Um, Redis uh, 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 has been introduced to, to create a, um, yeah, a scalable uh, uh, log station infrastructure. Uh, horizontal is available. So, uh, for instance, if you know that one log station instance is able to process 100 events per second, and a second, and you get 200, and a third, you get 300, etc. So, horizontal uh, scalability. We also wanted uh, some uh, high availability. Uh, uh, as mentioned, uh, yeah, the, the log station instance uh, inversion we use has a very long start time. Um, so when you're just running one, uh, and uh, yeah, it's the only one, you lose data. In our setup, we have uh, many log station instances, so you can restart one, and it doesn't matter if it take, takes a long time, because the others simply have to work a bit harder. Um, two Redis instances and three log station instances in, uh, in this uh, diagram. Um, uh, we use uh, Logsheep as our Redis client and uh, it's configured with uh, both uh, uh, Redis servers. When at startup, it simply picks one at random and it uses that as, as its uh, uh, Redis server. When there's an issue, an error, a failure, or whatever, uh, Logsheep simply recommends the other uh, one. So there's still the open there. We could have also implemented this with uh, with the VIP or uh, any other load balancing solution, but well, we uh, selected uh, we chose to do it at uh, the client side. Okay, so the event is sent to uh, the top Redis instance or or the bottom mm -hmm. Redis instance. It's it's sent to one of both, not both. And then we have log station instances that uh, are connected to both Redis uh, servers, and it simply uh, yeah pulls for new data. So uh, it, you can see in this case that uh, if you lose one Redis server. Uh, the other one will take over, and all the Redis services will uh, uh, get the, the new events from this one. If one log station instance fails, well, it doesn't matter. These two get, uh, yeah, uh, get, uh, get more work. Tip two. Um, log uh, has uh, three types of uh, plugins, inputs, uh, filters, and outputs. Uh, you can uh, uh, tune the, the number of threads uh, uh, um, behind those plugins. Um, it may become useful uh, when, uh, yeah, when you want to tune uh, uh, the, 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 the throughput uh, of a single log session instance. Uh, so how to know uh, what plugin is very busy. Uh, there's a very handy uh, uh, an option in the, the top command. The, the capital H will show you the, the threads. And when you pass it uh, process ID, well, it simply shows you the threads of that instance. And one of the great things that uh, Jordan Sissel built in Logstash uh, quite uh, early on was uh, that uh, every thread got named. So in the example to the right, you can see uh, uh, the, the top W of the capital H output of a Logstash instance. And you can see that the two workers uh, are uh, responsible for a total of uh, 30 CPU percent. Well, is that a lot? No, not really. But this is just an example to show you that uh, it's, it's good to, to, to run with the two uh, uh, workers. Otherwise, they would be running one uh, on, on 30%. Uh, maybe that, uh, that uh, could uh, more influence it. So you could also see that uh, the, the less than characters and the prefixes used uh, signal the, the inputs. And here are the a lot of outputs, including uh, analysis so yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we use uh, some custom uh, plugins that write there's a, a ball uh, underscore prefix. Tip three. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, like an old uh, rubber fun, I call it. Rubber fun plot. It's, uh, I've said it uh, before, uh, a group is very powerful, uh, it's very CPU intensive. So, um, yeah, and again mentioned, uh, uh, very hard to write and maintain and do. So what you, um, what you could do, of course, is a vertical scaling. Just uh, uh, add more CPUs or add more uh, uh, filter workers. Um, yeah, or uh, a horizontal scaling and more instances. But um, what we did was to simplify things and reduce the amount of cooking by uh, pre-formatting uh, pre, uh, pre the events in a, in a format that uh, 
that uh, Rochester is not free understand. Um, yeah, the solutions I've mentioned before. So the, 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 the JSON event layout in Rochester J and uh, uh, yeah, custom log format uh, for, for the patch. The last uh, uh, log session. Um, by default, uh, your Elastic uh, Search uh, output plugin in Logstash will use the, the native protocol. Very fast, it will uh, act as a, as, a, as a member in the Elastic Search cluster. Yeah, um, don't use it. Uh, Logstash requires you to use a very specific version of Elastic Search. So, um, you have a, a version walking. You want to upgrade Logstash? You need to upgrade Elastic Search. You want to upgrade Elastic Search? You need to upgrade Logstash, or wait until a Logstash version becomes available that is able to communicate with the new version. An alternative is to use the, the HTTP uh, protocol, and yeah, it may be slower, but um, as mentioned here, there are so many reasons why you want uh, to, to be able to, to update your Elasticsearch version without yeah, having to upgrade your Logstash. Uh, if you look at uh, the, the, the recent change logs of uh, Elasticsearch, Almost every release has a, a new cool uh, features like aggregation, for instance, um, something we're considering to, to create metrics from a, a, a log stream. Um, yeah, a lot of bug fixes um, and of course a lot of performance uh, uh, improvements. So you yeah, may be using HTTP uh, shows you down a bit, but if that means that the search becomes faster, well for me that's a no-brainer. Yeah, and with a lock-in, uh, I hate lock-ins. I mean, you probably uh, hate it too. So uh, you want to be able to decide what versions uh, uh, software you want to use. Uh, yeah, a quick uh, quick summary of the, the versions in, uh, at the, the, the footer. The, the last Logstash version requires an Elasticsearch version from April this year. Uh, yeah, and there are some two minor versions higher already available with a lot of performance improvements. So, uh, yeah, we're using HTTP and are very happy. Okay, so the first uh, Logstash tip. Um, yeah, Logstash, a complex bit of software. Uh, um, <coughs> wouldn't it be great to uh, go to, uh, uh, here you can download the greatest uh, search config in the world.com, download, download it, insert it, and uh, great. Yeah, sorry, it doesn't work that way. I really suggest you start with, uh, with the default configuration mm -hmm. and simply tune it uh, to make it uh, better in your software. Yeah, very interesting setting here, the refresh, the index refresh interval. Uh, it's a setting that uh, tells Elasticsearch um, how often uh, it has to make newly added uh, documents available for search. Um, it's a, it's a real-time system, but uh, real-time comes with a price, and uh, the default version is one, so every second Elasticsearch will make newly uh, added documents available for search. Uh, it, it means that it will do a lot of processing uh, to, to make that happen. Um, so we're currently running at five seconds, and uh, uh, last weekend preparing this presentation, I, uh, I changed the, 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 the setting at real time. One of the cool things about Elasticsearch, and a lot of settings can be changed at real time instead of restarts. So you can see the impact here on uh, the garbage collection time per second and also the, the load, the load the time, uh, uh, the CPU load, and that's the, the system load, so that's uh, the, uh, mainly caused by the IO. So you see it going up, that's when I changed it from one second to five seconds. Well, uh, when my graph was nice enough, I uh, restored it to the uh, So my advice to you is, uh, yeah, uh, try with the one second uh, default, and uh, see what happens. And uh, before you go live, uh, change it to uh, something higher than one second. And see if it still matches your, your functional requirements and also check your uh, metrics uh, to see what uh, the benefit is. So it's not really running into the concept. My third tip is use uh, Curator, uh, so an elastic search tool, to keep the total uh, shard count constant. Um, you started without using a uh, 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 <coughs> and what happened was uh, uh, we were running. Uh, Logstash. So Logstash creates a new uh, Elasticsearch index every day with, with the date and the So it means every day a new index is added and you can add it. So you have an ever increasing line of indexes. So the Elasticsearch index is made out of shards and uh, shards is what uh, uh, 
Yes, can uh, can I operate through a uh, shift push? So before running curator, the shard count will up and up, and uh, there's a, there's an invisible uh, ceiling, and when you hit it, your uh, shift push goes down, you know, crashes and a lot of a lot of issues. I've seen very uh, very nasty uh, uh, incidents. Um, and, uh, luckily, Elasticsearch is very good uh, uh, in recovery. So when you restart the first time, uh, uh, let's say I've done a lot of nasty uh, uh, restarts and uh, no data lost. So it's, uh, it's very good in that, uh, in that feature. So in controlled shard count, they trigger a uh, uh, very uh, unhappy hockey stick. Uh, so uh, uh, if you're using a uh, set of like ours with daily and indexes, I suggest you uh, start uh, uh, with curator to keep the total number of shards constant. Uh, yeah, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this graph uh, I've already discussed. You see the, the daily ups when new index are created, the daily downs when curator comes down and closes uh, the old indexes. Yeah, our shadow, so that's uh, we're using uh, six uh, data nodes, uh, a total of uh, yeah, six shards per index. Um, Three of those are primary shards, and we're running with uh, with the one and what we call from primary shards. Yeah, our um, yeah, what we're actually doing uh, was uh, is one shard per per day. Yeah, is that good? Well, it works for us. Is uh, is is there something better? Maybe. Um, it's good to explain it here. Uh, you could uh, uh, use a default of five shards per index. You could also say, okay. Uh, uh, go with 100 shards uh, or, or one or uh, whatever, it's, it's up to you to configure that. But there's a penalty, and the, the main issue about uh, uh, selecting a shard count is that once you, you create an index with a shard count, yeah, that index will have that shard count until you delete it. You cannot change the shard count during uh, uh, yeah, the, the run of time and you think mm, uh, I, it would be better to have four or any other number. Luckily, in our setup, we create new indexes every day. So every day is for us uh, mm -hmm. the moment we could say, well, uh, let's go with more or let's go with less. And there are, of course, elastic search setups that do not have that. But you simply create one index and <laughs> then yeah, you will use that index. There are some design patterns uh, available in order to use that. Uh, I do not know enough about it to really give you that. Okay, so the, the fourth uh, tip about uh, uh, log search. Uh, yeah, we come experience in uh, the restart in the Elastic Search question. Um, the first time I, uh, I executed a restart, uh, I, uh, well, I hoped uh, it uh, would succeed. Uh, yeah, it did. Uh, I, as mentioned, Elastic Search is a uh, yeah, very, uh, <coughs> very capable recovery mechanism. Uh, I've not uh, lost data uh, uh, since I was uh, uh, so reasons why you want to do a running uh, cluster restart, for instance, to run correction as a search software. Uh, and another reason, of course, is to apply a configuration setting. Oh, you try that? Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Is one better? Yeah. Okay. Turn that fish. Okay. Hold it here. Okay. Please do tell me those uh, things. It's okay. Let's keep it interesting. Can you go ten slides back? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Really? <laughs> yeah. I'll send the slides uh, after this presentation. So if you really missed it, don't understand it. Yeah. Uh, look at it uh, from home or from work uh, tomorrow. Uh, okay. So uh, executing rolling restarts very good uh, to keep up with uh, new uh, search versions. To apply configuration settings that cannot be changed at runtime. For instance, heap size, ground selection, options, things like that. Yeah, and simply because, well, if there's an issue, your Elastic Search cluster needs a restart. Well, yeah, you need to do a restart, of course. Um, yeah, when you look at the graph at uh, the bottom, uh, last uh, Saturday, I really, really wanted to uh, add a graph to this page, so I executed the road restart. Well, and my suggestion to you, get as confident uh, as this. You simply execute the restart on your Saturday evening and know damn sure that no engineer on duty will call you to ask what uh, you will do. Okay. 
Um, uh, when you're executing a rolling restart, there are three uh, options you can, uh, can use to control the concurrency and the, the, the bandwidth used by the restart. Because once you uh, restart your Elasticsearch cluster, it will trigger a recovery of, of all your shards. And uh, um, uh, it may uh, mean that uh, shards need to be copied to other servers uh, or after your recovery is done, you're rebalancing to either all the shards or all your data that uh, kicks in and uh, uh, triggers a lot of I.O. So the first uh, setting is uh, to, 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 uh, to define the number of concurrent recoveries per node. Uh, yeah, uh, my suggestion to you simply start with value one and uh, check your metrics to see uh, if, uh, if you can uh, up it. Uh, the reason why I added this page is because uh, uh, recovery can uh, uh, really saturate your network if you're not on a 10, uh, 10 gig uh, network. Uh, and also, uh, uh, yeah, hit your user performance uh, quite nicely. Searches can get very slow. So uh, it's good to, to be able to control, to dampen the impact of the whole recovery on, the, on your user's uh, performance. So the first one is the, the, the concurrent recoveries. The second one, when the recovery is finished, it will start to balance. Uh, and uh, this one also allows you to tune that uh, concurrency. And the third one, uh, very important, to, uh, to limit the, the, yeah, the network traffic. So uh, is a uh, search uh, allowed to fill up your 10 gig line, or uh, can it, uh, does it have to stay you know, at 50 uh, megabytes? That's my, my suggestion, by the way, to set it at 50, uh, 50 uh, megabytes. <coughs> Sounds uh, slow, but uh, 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 the, the previous two settings allow you to increase it, to multiply it. So if you set the, the, the node concurrent concurrent and uh, recoveries to, uh, to five, and uh, we probably have six data nodes, uh, that means that 30 uh, concurrent recoveries will be running at that 50 uh, megabytes. So that's also another way to spread the load over your systems and over the disks. And then the last one, all of your time, guys. All of your time. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a funny bit. Um, when you restart your cluster, it will improve uh, the, the time it, it takes to, uh, for your, for your uh, recovery. Um, what happens? and uh, um, is when, uh, when you restart your cluster, um, uh, Elasticsearch will trigger the, the, the recovery, and, and the recovery will compare your primary and replica shards. The primary is the main responsibility of the data, the replica is simply well, a copy. But of course it needs to be a copy, an identical copy, not something else. So recovery checks to see if it's still identical. Um, if the replica is different from the, the, the primary shard, all right. Uh, okay, there's a ghost here. Cool. Uh, uh, I'll simply stay in. Um, when there's a difference, uh, yeah, the, 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 the primary shard is copied to uh, a new replica shard. Rather, the replica shard is recreated from the primary shard. That means a lot of copying, a lot of network, a lot of disk I/O. So it's it's quite costly and time-consuming, of course. The weird thing is that a difference between a uh, primary and a replica shard is normal. They have the same documents, but byte-wise on the disk they are different. And that's uh, caused by the fact that every shard is a standalone Lucene index. And part of the whole Lucene index is that it does system uh, of segment merging. So it starts with small bits of data and it, it merges them to, to bigger chunks of data. Um, so the merging in your primary shard is different than the merging in your replica shard. Okay. Um, and that's okay. They still contain the same document, but likewise uh, your MD5 signature will be different. That's something that the recovery sees. So it, it compares the, the, the machine indexes file by file. It sees the, they're different, so it will copy them, even though they're actually not. Um, what it does then is recreate the replica as an exact byte-by-byte -byte copy of the primary shard. So once your uh, recovery is done, you have identical copies, uh, and so next time you then start the recovery, it will see, okay, yeah, I have the shard, and I have an exact copy replica, 
okay, skip this one and continue uh, uh, recovering uh, again those, uh, those 3,000 uh, shots uh, we're having. Okay, and um, I believe this is my last slide. Yes, it is. Well, we're still awake. Excellent. There's room for questions. Anyone? Yeah, in the back. If you have so few searches, why is your uh, refresh time still on the order of seconds? Why not minutes? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, <laughs> now, refresh doesn't have anything to do with search. Refresh has uh, everything to do about indexing. So the refresh uh, uh, is not executed when you search. It's simply part of how things work. So imagine a system like ours with 2,000 documents added uh, per second. Uh, those documents have to become available for search. So the refresh yeah, makes that happen. But if you only need them a couple of times a day, it's the wasting uh, computational power. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Except that, uh, uh, okay, imagine, boom, there's an incident. Engineer wants to look, so he opens the one and expects the logic to be there. Not wait half a day before that refresh triggers. So that's why we are running multiple uh, refreshes. When everybody gets stale data, the searches won't go up before we, yeah. nobody will use it. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, what we're currently having is a, a, a semi real time log search platform. Events are searchable in Kibana, I believe, within 10 seconds. 10 seconds. I mean, there's a little bit of overhead here, and there's, of course, some overhead in the. In the, the yeah, the case. Yeah. So, the way you build a JSON string with the Apache log format, yeah. will that always produce valid JSON, or does that depend on whatever I type in your search box? Well, one of the reasons uh, why you can break JSON, of course, is to add some quotes. Um, Luckily, the, the elements that we're using uh, are then already escaped. And maybe I believe that the patch already escapes quotes. So, uh, yeah, it, it could break the JSON. I uh, haven't seen it so far. So, yeah, that's good. What would you need to do to scale up to 40k documents per second, or maybe 100k? A yeah, very good question. I mean, uh, it's not uh, something I uh, have experience with, but I know that uh, uh, one of the main, uh, uh, one of the ways uh, that we uh, became able to parse uh, up to 4,000 documents per second or index 4,000 documents per second is by adding more data nodes. So simply spread the work over more, uh, uh, yeah, and search data nodes. Um, yeah, that's all. That's the, the answer I can give you. I mean, if you need a better answer, and I can imagine you want, uh, try to find one of the, the guys from Elasticsearch. This is our setup. I can't tell you. Oh, hand over there. Yeah. Well, it's a new question. Oh, a new question. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It's, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, my question is about uh, your old version of Logstash. Um, uh, uh, that's one of the things you can remember that. Uh, well, it's the uh, time-based uh, flushing uh, yet? Yeah, yeah correct. That's, uh, that's why we're using our custom uh, Elasticsearch output. <coughs> We've backported the flush time uh, uh, feature. So I believe every second, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the Elasticsearch uh, output plugin uh, works as follows. Um, it will flush uh, from Rockstage to Elasticsearch once it has uh, a predefined number of events, for instance 500, or uh, if it does not hit that uh, that limit uh, every second, so that's uh, yeah, we we backported that uh, functionality. Otherwise, it uh, yeah, we needed it. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. If you uh, if the lettuce clients already know all the lettuce instances, how do you scale up the lettuce? Um, well, yeah. Uh, one way, of course, is to simply start a third one or fourth, whatever needed. Two is really enough. I mean, uh, and uh, we're running Redis in a, in a, in a, a dual uh, uh, a virtual CPU uh, virtual, so just two, two CPUs, and it's really uh, no, boring. Very low. Uh, How long have your disks been up? Sorry? How, you know, if you've had issues with, with Logstack or Elasticsearch, how long have your, your uh, queues been? 
Oh, up to max memory. I mean, Redis can be configured with a max memory. I believe we've set up now to 12 gigabytes of memory. Yeah, and if, if Logstash is not able to, to process the login as fast enough, yeah, it goes up to that amount in, uh, in minutes. So the uh, uh, queue length in Redis is also a very uh, nice uh, KPI. Yeah. Uh, but to come back to your question, um, simply start uh, more instances and uh, reconfigure log a log sheet that it knows about those instances. And of course, Logstash that it also uh, reads from those queues. Yeah, but that's it. It's uh, yeah. yeah. Um, is Redis a cluster or are there two net separate servers? Totally separate. What happens if one of them breaks? Uh, well, uh, during normal operations, the queue is empty because okay. Logstash uh, uh, reads faster than new events are. So maybe you, you lose a few events. Okay. Yeah. And what happens if uh, Logstash uh, pops a message, an event, and then crashes with it? Is it lost? Yeah, we'll probably be lost. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I believe Logstash has an internal queue length. That is, it, uh, uh, it, it uses a queue, I believe, 10 or 100 uh, events. And the documentation is quite clear about it. So those are then lost because those are in memory and out of uh, Redis and not yet in in, uh, in a session. So your setup is uh, is vulnerable to using messages. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's it's not uh, uh, 99 or 99999. Have you measured it? Measured what? The number of the percentage. Yeah, very good question. It's not something I have done, but uh, I of course could measure what events are crea created somewhere, and then eventually see if they are all in Elasticsearch. So really end-to-end -end chain check. I haven't done that because we're not using UDP anymore, and yeah, I'm trusting TCP. Well, I'm confident that during normal operations, 100% uh, works. Yeah, I, I don't see any reason, any errors, any metrics uh, that, that uh, uh, make me doubt that. Yeah, but again, we're not running a nuclear reactor. Uh, <laughs> Individual nodes, you mean one Logstash instance per machine? Or? Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we started, oh yeah, also a nice story. And we started with those Logstash instances all running on virtuals. And uh, yeah, when you run in virtuals, um, the guys that provision those virtuals uh, are not expecting you to, to up those virtuals to 100% CPU load. Yeah, it's. You're, you're using virtuals because that does not happen, at least that's, uh, that's what they, they were saying. So uh, when we were uh, running at such a high load, very happy because we, we had a real-time, semi-real-time uh, log search system. Yeah, they, uh, they came up to me and said, uh, yeah, uh, very cool, of course, but um, could we maybe uh, move you to uh, physical hardware? Meaning away from their hypervisor. And uh, yeah, eventually we did. So uh, we're now, uh, we have four physical boxes that are running uh, more such instances for all our environments. It's something that I, that I haven't uh, covered in this presentation, but in our uh, data centers we're using uh, currently five, maybe six uh, separate environments. So production, admin, and uh, all those. Uh, so yeah, uh, we're, we're curr currently running there you are, sorry. <laughs> We're currently running multiple uh, Logstash instances per physical box. Um, yeah, uh, you could, of course, uh, start one Logstash instance and give it all CPU. But uh, yeah, we, uh, we, we decided to go uh, multi-tenant, so multiple environments per physical box. Uh, and uh, because we're still using that old Logs, uh, Logstash version, uh, in which you cannot uh, increase the, 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 the output uh, threads. It simply means that you still need to uh, add more log sessions. If you want to mention, for example, the web service itself, uh, the log session process. Oh, right, okay. They use uh, log session instances and shipper uh, as close to the source as possible. Yeah. yeah, one of the reasons why we developed uh, Logship was because we did not want uh, um, 
uh, your such instances running uh, you know, almost every server in the data center. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's cool. I really have to stay here. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, okay. Please repeat the question. Could you please uh, repeat the question? Yeah, um, uh, we use a lot of virtual machines. So every uh, Java application <coughs> runs in a virtual machine. And if you would uh, uh, add a Rockstage instance next to the, 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 the money-making uh, 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 Java application, yeah, uh, we, uh, I believe we, we, uh, we, uh, we approach 800 virtual currently. So consider 800 Rockstage instances. The, the memory, the, the CPU footprint, things like that. So um, that's one of the cases that we did not uh, decentralize, but did decentralize with uh, physical uh, hardware. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, I believe you uh, you really wrote the um, the Elasticsearch output plugin. Yeah. And you did something on the Reddit site. Did you consider? Um, uh, bypassing the uh, lost completely. So you do the formatting, so it could be that you use an output program yeah. from, from Reddit and push it to... Yeah, directly to, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, well, uh, two reasons why we did not do it. It's very uh, good to have a QE. So the, the yeah. Reddit server... Yeah, yeah but... Um, uh, you have a Redis client, it will send it to the Redis server, and something has to pick it up. Um, yeah, maybe there's, there's a river or something, maybe? No? Oh, the log session is better. Yeah, well, okay, and second reason. It's not as trivial as it sounds. Like you need queuing, you need bulking, you need to flush on time, you need to spawn up multiple walkers, you need to do all this work, so it's just easier to use it. Sounds very difficult. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, and a second reason why, uh, even with the blogging that we pre-format and push to via Redis to Logstash, um, yeah, we could uh, we could say, okay, well, that's that's the use of Logstash then still, uh, except reading it from Redis and pushing it to Elasticsearch. But uh, one of the things that also haven't covered because we're well, time is limited and uh, everybody wants to go to the beer, is that. Um, Logstash is very great in extracting metrics from the events that pass by. Uh, so uh, we use the, the, the StatsD uh, uh, output uh, fairly uh, uh, intensively. So we have uh, uh, metrics in Graphite uh, 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 that show you the amount of events processed by a single uh, Logstash instance. So uh, it's not just a logging but we have integrated the whole metric bit in the whole stream of data. We've also added a, a very small a custom uh, uh, search filter that calculates the lag. So the, the, the time, the, the current time in Logstash versus the time in the, uh, the original event. So the event was uh, created uh, uh, such and such time and then it uh, arrived in, uh, in Logstash maybe uh, a second uh, or two later. It's for us a KPI to see yeah, the lag, uh, so we know on average how long it takes for new events to uh, yeah, arrive in the next search. Yeah. No, oh, uh, yeah. You still have just oh, ah, the last two questions. Very good. Okay, uh, just one question. I'm still wondering about these uh, few searches per hour that you have. Uh, do you have any idea whether it's the same like there's a lot of very valuable information in the logs? Yeah. So do you think it's because you just still need to find that information and get it to the right people, or what is the reason? Well, the, 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 the reason why we, we've built a search platform is to enable people uh, for e with easier search. Um, it's not my job to, to, uh, to really make it happen, except I give presentations about how great it is and you could use this to make your work easier. Yeah, but if, if people uh, uh, do not uh, see a need to, to browse logging, yeah, they don't use the platform. Uh, I'm curious. Have you considered the 
Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, one of the great things about uh, Elasticsearch, uh, essentially in, in, in the, the later versions, is that you can do a lot of aggregation and analytics. It's just not, uh, it's not search anymore. So there, there are a lot of ways, of course, to, to uh, uh, get more value uh, from the login. Uh, and maybe we, we will see that in the, the next uh, few months, because we, we've uh, only deployed uh, Kibana 3 in uh, the last, uh, last two weeks, I believe. So maybe from there, you will see uh, dashboards, not simply for search, but for, uh, yeah, for all, all kinds of analytics. Uh, Elasticsearch uh, allows it. So that's good. Uh, that's uh, the last question. Google. Do you consider making any of the components open source? Yeah, yeah. Uh, not, not considered, but we will. Uh, the, the issue is that um, open sourcing something from a company point of view requires uh, you to uh, develop an open source policy which need to be checked by legal and <laughs> management and things like that. So, yeah, uh, check my GitHub. Uh, oh, it's not good to tell this. So, <laughs> yeah, OK. It's my last question. Close. OK, so thank you very much. Uh, what's the question I forgot to ask in the beginning? How many people are here for the first time? Not in Bobblecom, but in the meetup. So that's what it means to come to the So if you guys want to talk, um, be sure we can come here again or um, arrange something. So please uh, feel free to email me, ping me, or I would like to make it happen. So thanks again to both of them. I'm Sonny and I believe we can get more drinks. Bye.